Mucone esophagectomy is the preferred approach for locally advanced esophageal carcinomas in many centers. In this video, we will show the technique utilized at Oregon Health and Science University for patients with mid and distal esophageal cancers. A double lumen endotracheal tube is inserted during induction and the patient is placed in the left lateral decubitus position. The right pulmonary ligament is divided to the level of the inferior pulmonary vein and the level 9 lymph node, also known as the pulmonary ligament lymph node, is either removed or left with a specimen. Dissection is carried along the posterior hilum, dividing the mediastinal pleura up to the level of the azagous vein. The vein is then circumferentially dissected and divided using the endogia vascular load stapler. The mediastinal pleura is divided from the level of the azagous vein down to the diaphragm, and esophageal perforators from the aorta are divided using a harmonic scalpel. The left pleura is then divided, allowing for entry into the left pleural space. A penrose drain is then inserted around the esophagus. This is used for retraction to aid in the division of the contralateral inferior pulmonary ligament and dissection of the left level 9 lymph node. as well as the full mobilization of the esophagus from the cruise of the diaphragm up to the thoracic inlet. Special care is taken to avoid injuring structures such as the membranous portion of the left main stem bronchus. This is highlighted here. A lymph node dissection is completed according to the patient's pre-surgical imaging and workup. Typically, level 7 subcarinal, level 8 paraesophageal, and level 9 pulmonary ligament lymph nodes are taken. For mid-thoracic tumors typical of squamous cell carcinomas, or if there is suspicion of lymph node involvement, 3P, also known as upper posterior mediastinal lymph nodes and paratracheal lymph node stations, are resected. The thoracic duct is carefully dissected below the level of the inferior pulmonary vein. Ligation of the thoracic duct, which is thought to help prevent chylothorax, is then performed with ties or with endoclips, as shown here, and a right-sided chest tube is placed before repositioning. The patient is then placed in a split-leg supine position and a left-sided chest tube is inserted before the neck, chest, and abdomen are prepped and draped. The short gastrics are divided and mobilization is then carried along the greater curvature using a harmonic scalpel. Further mobilization of the posterior wall of the stomach is completed in order to lift the stomach anteriorly. A wide coker maneuver is then performed and the attachments to the hepatoduodenal ligament are incised. This helps to ensure that the conduit can span the length of the thoracic space without tension on the neck anastomosis. To test the adequacy of this mobilization, the pylorus is then brought to the hiatus, which indicates that sufficient cocorization has been performed. 
The stomach is then retracted anteriorly, and the left gastric vessels are dissected close to the origin to maximize lymphadenectomy. The left gastric vessels are then ligated with a vascular load endo-GIA stapler. Once the stomach and distal esophagus are completely mobilized, a 4 cm wide conduit is created using a series of medium to thick tissue load endo-GIA staplers along the stomach parallel to the greater curvature. Distal margins are taken from the lateral border of the specimen and sent for frozen. A pylormyotomy is then performed with an L-hook. This helps to improve gastric emptying. In order to minimize the loss of pneumoperitoneum, the phrenoesophageal ligament is left intact until the conduit is completed. This must be incised in order to remove the specimen. The proximal end of the gastric conduit is then secured to the distal specimen so that the conduit can be pulled into position when the specimen is removed through the neck incision. Great care is taken to maintain the orientation of the gastric conduit as it passes through the chest in order to minimize the risk of compromised blood flow through the right gastroepiploic artery. The esophagus and GE junction and proximal gastric conduit are then brought up through the neck incision. A stay suture is placed between the cervical esophagus and the gastric conduit. Then the sutures securing the tip of the gastric conduit to the specimen are divided. The esophagus is transected using scissors and the specimen is passed off the field. Because we have found a high rate of hiatal hernia following esophagectomy, the gastric conduit is then secured to the hiatus using a series of pledgeted O-Tychron sutures along the circumference of the hiatus at intervals of 1 to 2 centimeters. The most proximal gastric staple line is imbricated with interrupted 2O silk suture for a length of approximately 10 centimeters. A partially stapled side to side anastomosis is then performed with a 45 millimeter medium to thick tissue endo GIA load. A nasogastric tube is passed into the gastric conduit and bridled in place. This will stay in place until about three days post-operatively. The anterior anastomotic wall is closed in a two-layered hand-sewn fashion using 3O Maxon running suture over the nasogastric tube. followed by another outer row of 3O silk sutures placed in a Lembert fashion. The incision is then closed with 3O Vicryl 4-0 monocryl, and skin glue.